Well, the effect itself is pretty simple. You just take a special kind of transistor, put it in an extremely large magnetic field, and cool it, make it very cold, and then measure its electrical properties, and they exhibit certain exact things. This effect was discovered in Germany by my colleague Klaus von Klitzing. It was a great shock. The uh, idea that you might have had something like that had floated in Japan before, but no one imagined that it would be eight significant figures accurate. That meant there was a principle of organization there that no one had known before. Now, the fractional effect is a follow-on to Klissing's original discovery, which indicated something additional, namely that the electrons were going into a new phase. They were organizing themselves into a new, new phase, like liquid vapor gas, uh, uh, except that it didn't have any precedent. And the most interesting thing about it of all was that it has what we call excitations, uh, uh, charged objects that move around that are collective motions. They act like particles, but their electric charge is wrong. Mm. It's one third mm. of the electron charge. And what's more, this one third is exact. And uh, there are many examples of that in nature my favorite example is rigidity, but there's also superconductivity, the ability of certain metals to conduct electricity perfectly, superfluidity, the ability of certain fluids to flow without loss. Nature is very pecunious. It doesn't let you know how things work easily. Every now and then it throws you a little dog bone, a little clue. And those clues, when you see them, are miracles. Now you can say, oh, this miracle is an accident and throw it away. Or you can say this miracle means something and think hard about what it might mean. In fact, superconductivity is the prototype for a part of the theory of the vacuum of space that we now accept as probably right, called the Higgs model. Uh, as far as we know, the universe is pervaded by something very much like uh, a superconductor. Mm. New experiments, of course, are trying to find out for sure. But that's a beautiful example of taking the tabletop effect and, and, and uh, ramifying it to bigger, bigger things. I think if you step back from the discipline of physics, you'll see that every one of us is an arch conservative. Where we're coming from is measurement. And we are very entertaining when we're talking about things we can imagine, but we're not entertaining when we're talking about measurement. There's no, there's no postmodernist belief stuff that happens there, if that's true, okay? So when you have laws, a law is a law. That's the thing that's the miracle of nature. Who said that there should be relationships among measured things that are always true? It isn't at all self-evident, it's a miracle. You know, I'd see, well, well, if you have one miracle, why would you expect two? That there, there should be two kinds of these miraculous things, one that's collective and one that just is. Uh, I think more likely the rest answer is that there's only one kind. What you're really asking is, where did the law come from? One idea is it came about collectively because of principle of organization. And the other idea is that it just is. The second idea is in fact, a very profound religious idea that goes back way to the roots of our civilization. Now you think about it a minute, it doesn't make sense that there would be two kinds of exact thing because they're too miraculous. So probably one of them is a myth. Now, I don't know the answer to this question, but I'm suspicious that the fundamental idea, the idea of fundamental law may turn out to be completely mythological.